just before the show, I spoke to the former England and Manchester United star Gary Neville about all of this and his new campaign, United City, which is trying to kickstart Manchester's economy. I began by asking him if the government was wrong to put the city into tier three. I don't think it's necessarily the major complaint of myself or the, or the other uh, members of the community in Manchester about what tier we're in. I think it's the fact that there doesn't seem to be a long, you know, sustainable plan to come out of this pandemic, that we feel that uh, we've obviously been in restrictions for quite a long time now within Greater Manchester. The economic support packages don't differ than any other cities that are not suffering those restrictions. So there's an element of feeling that uh, not just ourselves, but other tier three areas are being treated unfairly. Um, it's not a north-south thing. It's not a Manchester v London thing. Um, it's more about, uh, I suppose, in some ways, changing the direction of the messaging. We need to be bold. We need to be bold. We need to make sure that there is a, a, there's hope for the residents of Manchester, Greater Manchester, and the business community have come together in the last few weeks. There's 120 of us now that have joined who feel the same way. We're frustrated. We're frustrated from the inconsistency, the flip-flop strategies that the government have adopted over the last eight months. I think we're even frustrated by the fact that yesterday the Labour Party abstained. You know, your job's to stand as a leader in the most difficult times. It's not to abstain. It's not to not turn up. MPs go to people's houses during general elections to urge them to come out and vote. And you then you go into a parliament, into Westminster as an MP, and your job within there is to make sure that you protect your constituents. And from that point of view, the people who this pandemic attacks most are the vulnerable and disadvantaged. And, and Labour couldn't abstain yesterday. They had to take a position. You say that because it's damaging the economy and you say it's not about London versus Manchester, but I've certainly had people on the phone from Manchester pointing out that their levels are lower. We had data last week that shows parts of Manchester are much lower than parts of London and a suggestion that actually the economy in London was taken into account. Do you think the economy hasn't been taken into account properly in the decisions in these tier three areas? I, really, I just don't like the idea of this London versus Manchester, this divisive talk and the way in which division is created by this type of rhetoric. I don't like it. There are communities in London that are suffering badly during this pandemic. There are communities in Manchester that are suffering badly during this pandemic, whether it be with health, mental health and well-being, whether it be their livelihoods and incomes. And it's making sure that there is a fair approach across the communities that need it most all across the country. I know there is an element of Manchester versus London through what happened a few weeks ago with Andy Burnham standing outside of, uh, a, 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 of Parliament with the other Greater Manchester leaders and asking for greater sort of economic support packages. That was the right thing to do. But when you stand like that, you've then got to go the full way. And I think that we were let down yesterday by MPs who didn't vote against the tiers. If the tiers protect health but don't protect other areas like livelihoods, incomes, mental health and well-being, take the restrictions down, stand up, be strong and make sure you get the packages through that you need you... before you can vote for something. How bad will it be if Manchester is not taken out of tier three on the 16th of December? How damaging will it be? It'll be another blow, there's no doubt about that. I mean... The... The uncertainty that we have at this moment in time is that we're actually unclear as to actually when they're going to review this next. They're saying the 16th of December, but then they're saying that hospitality won't be able to open till the 19th. I mean, I've got two hotels with three restaurants and the idea that we can mobilise our staff, mobilise, you know, the food orders and other deliveries, it's something that, to be fair, has been discussed today on calls all through Greater Manchester. We need, we need for, uh, better warnings. At least give us a chance if we are going to open on the 19th by t or 16th by telling us earlier and reviewing it earlier so that we, we can operate more freely beyond that date. So at this moment in time, there's still a level of uncertainty. And I think that's the big problem throughout all this. The lack of clarity in messaging, the inconsistency and the uncertainty it creates is something that has a real devastating impact on many lives. And we hope to come out of the, uh, the tier three okay. on the 16th of December. Uh, but... We, we need early warning if we're going to be able to make it a success pre-Christmas anyway. OK, can I ask you about Marcus Rashford? We've obviously all been watching his campaign closely. I'd say football is speaking out more these days, but he was the subject of a Daily Mail article which criticised him for owning a number of luxury homes. Do you think that speaking out has turned him into a target? Well, I think it was expected that that would come. Uh, at certain points, I think football players generally, when they're built up, that will get knocked down again. Uh, it, it's happened before. 
uh, what Marcus has done. I, I spoke before about bold leadership, and okay. Marcus Rashford's been bold over this last six months with what he's done. And they will always then become a target because of that. It's unfortunate. Um, I think we saw it with Raheem Sterling a few years ago, and he, he came to me personally during a European Championship, Raheem Sterling, where he talked to, to me about him being targeted. Uh, and he felt as though he was being unfairly uh, criticised and he was being isolated. Um, and I think Marcus Rashford, to be fair, was very... His response to the Daily Mail article was strong. It nipped it in the bud. Uh, and it's the type of reporting and journalism that we need, we need to end. Fascinating. Listen, I just want to ask you a couple of other things. There's a lot of talk about the need to change the culture in the FA. Some might say it's a bit blokey. Would you support a woman becoming chair of the FA? I'd support a more diverse and inclusive FA. Uh, you know, quite simply, what's happened is, is that football governance in this country and the structure of football in this country needs to change. If you look at what's happening in football at this moment in time, the Premier League are being challenged by the EFL over rescue packages. Uh, the EFL are being challenged by the PFA. The PFA have just had an independent review and are being investigated by the Charity Commission. You know, the FA have just had to, uh, the FA chairman has just had to resign over diversity and inclusion. You know, quite simply, football governance in this country is not good enough. I've been calling for an independent regulator with a, with a group of people uh, over the last few months because it's quite simple that it's just not good enough. Uh, and the FA has been an organisation which has been behind the times for many, many years. It's not just a today problem, it's one for the last 20, 30, 40 years. It needs to modernise and it needs to be an organisation that's inclusive. Um, and, and he's fit for purpose in, in, in 2020. And super quick final question. You're sounding very, very political. You're quite critical of Labour. When are you going to be running for Manchester Mayor? <laughs> I'm not going to run for Manchester Mayor. Uh, Andy's doing a, a, a very good job in representing Greater Manchester. Um, I do feel more political over the last two, three years. I think everybody does, uh, because the fact of the matter is that politics has become something that's been thrust in our face with Brexit, with now with this pandemic. Um, I think the fact that you've got divisive leaders like Donald Trump and Boris Johnson uh, that essentially, I think, mean that people feel more political. Okay. And it, it's quite simple as far as I'm concerned. Just a more fair approach for everybody, look after everybody, make it about people, not politics, and we'll all be OK. And to me at this moment in time, everything is too political uh, even though I feel more political, but it's, it's, it's not <laughs> enough about people, it's more about the politics. OK, Gary, thank you very much.